Hello there ladies and gentlemen, welcome to a quick episode here on Pastiche of Skin. Today we're doing a little bit of a Derm Discovers kind of thing because there's actually a reasonably decent sale on in the PSN at the moment. I'm going to take a wee look through the UK version of the double discount sale and I'm going to check out the American one as a separate video or sales that are on in the American channels. This is the fact that every single time we get an update of the store we start to see some differences and different prices and where other things are worth getting one or the other. So um, let's take a quick look at the deals of this week on uh, European and PSN. Of course, the big uh, deal of the week that they're promoting as a single game is Deus Ex Mankind Divided, which is down from its full price to twenty nine or thirty two ninety nine. But um, the biggest problem I have with Deus Ex being on a discounted price is the plentiful amount of DLC that just pretty much makes it like if you were going to play the the kind of like crammed in multiplayer mode in this and do the hacking modules over and over again. It's going to encourage you to start spending money on this. So, as much as I actually love the Deus Ex um, Human Revolution game, this has kept me from really kind of getting into it. Uh, obviously, a season pass is one of those things that you are perfectly okay with, but uh, all the rest of the stuff is putting me off. A season pass, well, when we say we're okay with season passes, I don't like the idea of paying for content that hasn't been designed yet. So, as you can see, the first piece of single player content has already been added in. So, I don't know. If you think it's worth your while, Mankind Divided is a continuation of the previous Deus Ex series. But we're on to the bigger stuff that we really care about today. Today is the double discounts for PSN Plus users. Now, some of the games in here are down by 35%, which isn't that big of a deal or that big of a price change from whenever they're normally put on sale on the digital, where they're down to the price of actually being able to buy them in a store. But with the added benefit of being a PS Plus member, it's up to 70% in some games, and there's one or two that I'd really be interested in, but a lot of this stuff is PS2 games that have actually been redone for the PS4. Now, Uncharted the Nathan Drake Collection for $17.99, if you are a Sony fan, you've probably played the Uncharted games in some way, shape, or form before. I've played through them, I uh, played through the first one, on PS3, and I hated it. I couldn't stand. I couldn't stand some of the the shooting mechanics, and I didn't like the combat in it. And it was one of those things where people were saying, "Just, just get good." And I was going like, "No, no, it's just the encroaching AI, and it's a, it's not fun to fight through. It feels like a slog every time I have to get into one. I dread it. Meanwhile, I enjoy all the exploration. It's really, really fun. The characters really interesting, but the gunplay drove me around the bend. And whenever it got to the point where you're sitting on a goddamn jet ski and dodging bombs, I just really put me off of it. So I haven't played through the rest of the Uncharted series. It's put me off at the very early stages, but apparently Uncharted 4 is a magnum opus, it's an amazing piece of art in video game form that people really should play apparently, but I don't know because the first game put me off. Don't think they made that many major changes for the Nathan Drake Collection in HD for the PS4, but as you can see, all th it's three games for the price of $17.99 and apparently they're quintessential classics and exclusives to the platform, so I can imagine there's plenty of people who are really into it, but at the price... It's maybe worth a, a bit of an exploration. Ratchet & Clank, of course, the um, video game of the movie, of the video game series, where if you've seen the film, you've seen all the cutscenes from this game. Meanwhile, if you haven't seen the film and don't want to pay to see it, you could play this game instead and do the exact same thing. Kind of, uh, it sits in there in the same vein in my mind as like the Knack series, or the, not the Knack series, the Knack game, which was a really interesting, fun adventure movie. But I was involved in it all the way through, so I kind of enjoyed playing it. Ratchet and Clank for fourteen ninety nine. If you've got kids in the house, you've got young, uh, young, uh, young adults, you've got young kid players that are actually playing on your console. You couldn't go wrong with Ratchet and Clank. It's fairly entertaining. It does feel quite tame by the uh, earlier Ratchet and Clank standards of titling for. Um, the way Insomniac kind of like entertain themselves. Uh, the, the risque Animaniacs level of humor is a bit toned down in this, but it's still pretty interesting character designs and uh, pretty fun level development. So GTA, the trilogy. So the trilogy is, of course, 3, Vice City, and San Andreas for the PS4. We know what those games are. Why am I explaining it to you? If you haven't played them before, and you don't mind seeing pretty old PS2 games up res to HD, then give them a try. Meanwhile, personally, I enjoy playing through them on uh, previous consoles with my own custom soundtracks. That's the only thing that really would bring me back to playing them is doing the custom soundtracks again inside the video games, but that's not an option that's available. You can play Spotify over the top of it, but you can't really do your own radio show on the car, car radio whenever you jump in. There's plenty of times I never did that, but like I used to take my test samples of my podcast and radio show and put them on as 
radio stations on GTA, and the, uh, do you know when you kind of hit hearing yourself? Whenever you slide it into context like that, I might have listened to the same episode of my own show like half a dozen times. And it, made, like, it was essentially the car test. It made it work. It made it work for me. Tom Clancy's The Division, down to 1999. Is there anybody still playing The Division? Um, the single-player content of it just seemed quite dry. The multiplayer content seemed unfair. The whole experience left me a bit wanting after the beta, so I never picked up the game. There are plenty of people who are enjoying The Division, but if you're not into bullets, soak bosses, uh, you want to like one-shot, one-kill kind of uh, gameplay, this isn't it. This is an MMO inside a action RPG setting. I mean, probably the best bet to compare it to, with even in my own history of playing games, Final Fantasy Star with bullets, bunch bosses. That's what it is. What can you do? But at the price of $19.99, still definitely a miss. <laughs> Mad Max at $14.99. The open world Ubisoft fuck around a thon has reached to the movie level proportions or movie license proportions. Mad Max is a decent game. It's uh, at fourteen ninety nine. It's well worth the price for it. The fuck aroundery and entertainment value of it is quite high. While at the same time, the sameness and repetition of missions will keep you from probably finishing it. But you'll get a good solid five to ten hours of really enjoyable gameplay that may not lead to a completion of the game. If you want to go completionist, it's a uh, not a slog, but there's a lot of stuff to be done to get to that platinum trophy. Down to EA Sports UFC 2 at $21.99. UFC. <laughs> what do you want me to say? It's a UFC fighting game. If you're a fan of these, you're a fan of these. If you haven't got it already, it's at the price of $21.99. Fighting mechanics apparently have changed a fair bit. Grappling mechanics have changed a fair bit. I didn't get into these. I pretty much ended up just having slobber knocker knockouts with friends. It's good fun in multiplayer, but I've never really kind of had a massive interest in the UFC series. Not to my taste, but could be to yours if you want to actually play Ronda Rousey and you, you McGregor, <laughs> Conor McGregor in the in the squared arena, the octagonal squared arena. Then give it a try. Battlefield Bundle, which is pretty much a hardline and battlefield. Four bundle, which if you're waiting for Battlefield 1, why are you not playing it already? If you haven't played these games, you may find that the player base is starting to decline because they're all shifting across to their new game. Battlefield uh, never been a game of interest to me. Only ever played it with friends, multiplayer a little bit. I'm not held on to this. I tried the bit of the brand new one as well. Not my game, game of choice, not my style of game. But to, of course, people, it's a big debate. Which one is it, Battlefield or Call of Duty? And if you're going to be a Battlefield fan and you haven't played these ones, then you can get them cheap now at $14.99. That's what's there. This is the one that I'm interested in, actually. Uh, Street Fighter V at uh, $17.49. Now, you can pick up Street Fighter V on occasion in stores for about £17. And I knew this discount was coming uh, because I've seen it actually on a number of like bigger chain stores in the UK at that price, minus, of course, the Season Pass. So if you're interested in the Deluxe Edition that comes with Season Pass and the characters from Season 1 and some of the costumes, I think, I think you get some of the costumes in the Season Pass as well for Street Fighter V, then at $24.99, it's actually a reasonable value. I'm interested in this because I'm a 2D fighter and by, like I've spent my entire childhood playing Street Fighter. I will buy and play a Street Fighter game even if I don't have anybody to play it with. I have actually purchased it on a number, like I've bought four on a number of consoles. I actually recently dug up my old Sega Saturn to play a copy of Street Fighter Alpha 2 so I could play as Kami in it. I mean, it's a game series that I'm going to play and buy at $17.49, reasonably priced, especially considering that we do have the story missions actually added in now. At the price it was when it had release, God no. It was not worth it until at least that July update. Now there's a few characters added in, competitive gameplay is really rolling in. You're not going to find it for much cheaper than this for a while, so maybe a worth a purchase of $17.49 if you're willing to play through it to unlock your own characters. If you're wanting to get a quick access to some of them, this season pass is also bundled in for $24.99. Star Ocean. Uh, in, well, integrity and faithful, faithlessness? Is that what uh, IAF is? Integrity and faithlessness. I have done a few videos about Star Ocean already on here on the channel. If you want, you can check out just a, just a tip. At the end of this video, there'll be a link to it, uh, where I show how to pretty much break the game over your knee after a certain period in the game. Like Maybe after about 10, 12 hours of gameplay, you can pretty much damage the, uh, the difficulty curve to the point where you just have nothing to fear. Good game, enjoyable game, not the 
best game in the Star Ocean series by any stretch of imagination. That, to me, still is held by the Last Hope International Edition. If you can get a hands on that on PS3, I recommend The Last Hope. It was a really good game. A lot more grindy than this. Uh, this one seemed very, very led by its nose action. I didn't mind it. I didn't dislike it, but I would highly recommend going for something other than this if you as your first Star Ocean, especially if you're interested in playing something that's a little bit more exemplar of the Star Ocean series. This one has very little of the stars in this ocean. It's really, really dependent on one place. Meanwhile, Last Hope, exploration was key in that world. Well worth checking it out. I highly recommend it. So what's next? Assassin's Creed Syndicate Gold Edition for $27.49 and the original edition for $14.99. It is an Assassin's Creed game after pretty much the what was the last one? Uh, Unity. After Assassin's Creed Unity, there's been a little bit of kind of like a push that these games are garbage. The Assassin's Creed is Assassin's Creed. They're, they're pumping them away year after year. So I mean, literally the same problems are going to happen one after another. They're going to have the same kind of the graphical glitches and a little bit of lunacy. But uh, Assassin's Creed's still the fuck around simulator of the year for a lot of people. I'm. Um, I would actually enjoy Assassin's Creed game just for the uh, the inventiveness of the world, but uh, I think my enjoyment of the story has been dropped after Assassin's Creed Revelations, where uh, the main character has been kind of like separated off from uh, the well, the Ezio collection essentially from Desmond and that world that that kind of like or, origin story. Now that we're playing it as a person who's playing a video game in a world, it doesn't intrigue me as much. It, it feels like they've kind of like gotten a little bit too meta about it, but lost the idea of doing the future world storyline. Of course, the Assassin's Creed movie is coming out very soon, so maybe this is actually your opportunity to kind of get into the series if you haven't already. So at $27.49, nah. But at $14.99, it's, it looks like a reasonable price, but this game will drop in value probably again fairly soon. Now the next one's Beyond Two Souls and Heavy Rain. If you haven't played Heavy Rain, Jason! 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 Is probably one of the most memorable things I'll ever get from that game. <laughs> just, you know, I haven't finished Heavy Rain. It's a it's the it's the active narrative game of choice. It's a it's the David Cage, man. It's a Beyond Two Souls and Heavy Rain and Fahrenheit. Uh <sighs> Well, what are you expecting from them? You're expecting a interactive storyline that has a series of choices that you make that lead to an inevitable but yet also unbelievably confusing end. So, yeah, feel free to pick up the two of them for $13.99. If you haven't played Heavy Rain, worth it. If you haven't played Beyond Two Souls, eh, you can probably skip over it. Uh, yeah, Beyond Two Souls, to me, was actually the weaker of the two games, but the visual fidelity in it was much higher, so... What do you want to choice yourself? Do you, do you want to, if you're going to go for one, you might as well get both at this price because you're not going to get uh, the both like one of them actually individually for any less than the package deal of thirteen ninety nine. That's all it is. So what else have we got on this? Of course, we have got the GTA three, San Andreas, and Vice City, also all contained inside the triple bundle from earlier on. So we'll skip over those. Lego Batman three Beyond Gotham, kids in your house, Lego games, co op. That's all there, right? Like if you're actually the kind of person who's played a single Lego game, you know exactly what the gameplay of this is going to be like. If you're a fan of the Lego movie and the articulation of Batman from that, and they're hotly anticipating the Batman Lego movie, then you're going to get a kick out of this. It's Lego Batman. It's a, they include the kitchen sink and this sort of thing, and the humor of the Lego games is pretty good, so you won't feel completely left out, and your kids will absolutely love it. Lego Batman. $14.99. If you haven't got it already... I'm willing to bet you're probably kind of like not that much into Lego. The crew! Of course, it says 50% off, but what is the actual price for the crew? $9.99. Do you like driving games? Do you like driving games? I don't. Well, I don't like arcade driving games. So, really little to no interest for me. So at $9.99, if you wanted the price, you want to be driving it. If you haven't bought the crew already, you're probably not the audience for the crew. But, I mean, there's a lot of driving options out there. Drive Club is available as well. Don't really feel the need to buy it at that price. But you could probably enjoy it. A set of Corsa is a similar enough game. It does the same thing. It's a driving game as well. Reality driving games don't hold my attention. I've been a Forza Horizons fan or a Ridge Racer fan for so long. Red Racer, which is I'm pretty sad that that's a franchise that's kind of gone by the wayside. So moving on past Battlefield Hardline, which was also included in the previous bundle, 
Dragon Age Inquisition. I already own this game. Haven't got a chance to properly play it. Not a spat or a spit or a touch on the original Dragon Age Origins, but a much more of an improvement over Dragon Age Origins 2, so what are you going to make a choice over? Are you going to be upset about that or are you going to actually just kind of accept that it's probably like that was a golden moment in storytelling? We're done and dusted with Dragon Age otherwise, so there's a lot of content included in the Game of Year edition, but I have seen this game going for really, really, really cheap. I mean, I think the goal, given the Year edition at one point was going for like six, seven pounds. I don't even know how much this version is, so it must be dirt cheap. If you're an RPG fan, worth a try. Maybe, probably, kind of take a wee gander into it, but if you're going to get it, get the Game of the Year edition to make sure you get the full value of your content. The Order 1886. Yes, I am just covering it, passing over just saying I'm not even going to do it. The Order 1886, four hours at most of gameplay, pretty looking game, launch title for the PS4. If you want a better PS4 history, worth a try, but I have it on disc, so I'm never going to purchase it. I'm surprised I even still have it on disc. It's just one of those games I'm going to hold on to it because it was one of the first ones I got. Extremely disappointed at its time. Uh, the world, the werewolf hunting it, it doesn't seem it it got slitted it, it just it wasn't worth the money it was previously but if we see it in a seal after this drop down to the under 10 pound mark might be worth a try like it's the kind of game that if you're going to be doing a walking simulator you probably get exactly the same amount of value out of worms battlegrounds the worms return the worm has turned the worm turns again and takes his turn to blow you in the face worm battlegrounds continues on the historical series of team 17 what can you say? Worms. If you haven't played a Worms game over the last 25 years, then you haven't experienced Worms at all, so you probably enjoy Worms Battlegrounds. It's turn-based battle combat, multiplayer, worm warfare. And wait until the first time you use a concrete donkey, you'll be delighted. Or that or the holy hand grenade of Antioch. It's a good time. I recommend it. Injustice Gods Among Us. Of course, the Injustice 2 is about to land on our feet. I recommend playing Injustice 1 if you haven't played it at all, or at least watching through all the cutscenes of it, because you might not like that version of Superman that's going to be portrayed in it. Also, highly, 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 highly recommend the Injustice comics. They are absolutely amazing. They're well worth the viewing. If you get a chance to sit and read through those, get through the first three years at least. Um, I haven't read year four myself yet, but I enjoyed the hell out of the first couple of years of the comic book series. It's the peripheral material to this story is as good as the original game. This is the apology that they've made for MK versus DC from well back. So they did a good job of this. It's a well-balanced, fun fighter. Just don't try to challenge anybody online. You'll get beaten into the ground if you haven't got any experience. Of course, Ultra Street Fighter 4 is available for $7.99. Cheap. Cheap Street Fighter. I mean, the, the new one's only $17. This one's down to $7.99. Do you play 2D Fighters at all? Who's your main? Who's your main? Tell me. My main is the random button. Because I've probably played enough rounds of every single character in this to not give somebody a challenge, but at least be able to know all their moves. Candace kind of magnet. It's Bully Scholarship Edition on the PS4. Yeah, changing the name to Candace kind of magnet. Eat it, eat it, eat it, edit, it, eat, it, eat it. Yeah, changing the name to Candace kind of eat it doesn't really make me forget the fact that it was called Bully Scholarship Edition whenever it originally came out. At $5.99, this is a Rockstar game and a series that has been abandoned for many years. Maybe by purchasing it and playing through it, you might get them to kind of pay attention to the series and bring it back. I highly do believe it will not happen, but this is a game that caused a lot of controversy whenever it originally came out, but fits in perfectly well with the Rockstar fuck around, going through a city, doing missions thing, but set with a teenager in a boarding school. Look at the world, give it a try, see what you think of it. I recommend at this price as a PS2 to PS4 game. Eh, it's alright. Um, not going to look pretty. It's going to be in the same vein as GTA 3, but you might actually get a crack out of this, especially just for the mechanics difference, the world difference compared to a larger GTA game. Down onto Manhunt, the slashy, murdery, simulator, killing floor thing that probably got banned in Ireland. I think the second one got banned in Ireland for because it showed you killing somebody with a bin bag. I don't know. Manhunt. Violent. Gore. If you're into that, it's there. 719, but again, a PS2 to PS4 port. There's a limitation to what they can do with these. If you haven't played them already on the PS3 or on the PS2, then it's there for you and it's cheap, but remember, it is an older game, so you're going to have to 
take that into account. Max Payne, the first of the Max Payne series, great game, amazing storytelling, looks like ass. It really does not translate very well to this era. It's just uh, how old it is. It's one of those games that just, it's, it, it's of its time. Most definitely. If you can get your hands on the third game in the series, Max PN3, it's damn good. I enjoyed the hell out of that. Um, I played through that on PC on Ultra settings. Yes, I, I, I enjoyed that. I, I was mesmerized by how beautiful it was whenever it first came out. Compared to everything else now, it's still, it, even it looks like pants. So if that looks like pants now compared to modern games, this looks like pants compared to my actual pants after a very large, dirty load. Okay, so on to the next Psycho Pass, Mandatory Happiness at twenty six ninety nine. It's a visual novel. It's a visual novel. It's a visual novel? It's a visual novel. Set in the Psycho Pass world. At $26.99. I don't believe... It's a visual novel. I like Psycho Pass. Well, Series 1. So, um, yeah. Twenty-six ninety-nine for a visual novel. Grand Ages Medieval. I know absolutely bugger all about this game. It's one of those games that just, I, I have no idea what it is. It literally, it seems to be an RTS battle world, uh, like great, great medieval battles of England, or uh, Rise of Empires, or something in the similar vein. It's... It's... Combat, it's an R it's a, it seems you feel like a giant RTS. If you like looking at these style of games where you see large scale combat on a world map, you'll enjoy this. I I, I mean I, if I was gonna watch something like this, I'd probably watch it on a Sonic Mountain Blade rather than actually being able to watch it on something like my P or like a something like this. I, I mean, Age of Empires probably interests me more. I, it just doesn't doesn't hold my interest. Um, you might get a case of one more turn whenever you're playing this, but if you're actually the one more turn type, you're probably busy playing Civ 6 right now, so I wouldn't really concern too much about it. So, yeah. Maybe apparently it was large and ambitious, but I've never heard of it. Alien Nation. Zap those, on zap those monsters. Just zap them. Destroy them all. At six nine six thirty nine, it's a reasonable price to pay. Um, Top-down shooter. It, it, that's it's, it's as retro as you can possibly get. But it's there. It's worth giving it a try to. Um, I don't know if it's... I, I, I've played through like a demo wee bit of Alienation. Didn't hold my interest, but I have... I, like I, I, It feels like this kind of thing that would be so much more enjoyable in multiplayer. So if you have local co-op to play along with, then it, it might be worth your while. Blood Bowl 2. I'm not a Blood Bowl fan. Um, if you're into tactical turn-based... American football with monsters. How about you? Enjoy the hell out of it. Uh, this game is not for me, but I know a lot of people who are tabletop gamers who swear by it and will love it. But their only problem with it is the uh, extended teams, the extended rosters, or uh, DLC passes that onto it. Like, putting a race into it, making a race of characters, DLC, is a bit of a dickish move. The commentators are really entertaining, and it's actually one of those things that can turn around to do one of the voices. Yeah, it's a little bit easier to actually do the commentators. But the, um, the actual gameplay doesn't intrigue me. The world, the concept, per I like the execution, just mechanically doesn't hold my attention. Now we're down to the la in the sports sections here a wee bit. We have Everybody's Tennis at three ninety nine. It's a PS2 port. Everybody's tennis. Do you like tennis? It's worth a try. Baseball. The show. No one talking about baseball. Fifteen ninety nine. I suppose you could actually be intrigued into that, but if you're a kind of person who's going to be buying yearly uh, baseball games, I'm willing to bet you've probably had the show for a while. Um, anybody who isn't otherwise will probably already be grabbing this up for the price. Wasteland 2 at ten forty nine. Buy it. 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 Buy this game. At ten forty nine. War Wasteland 2 is an amazingly fun game to play. It's going to catch you extremely off guard if you're not into classic kind of RPG gameplay. It, Wasteland was the precursor to the Fallout series. So there was Wasteland, then Fallout 1, Fallout 2. Um, 
the top-down world, the kind of turn-based tactical combat. If you've played an XCOM, the most recent XCOM games, like Enemy Unknown, Enemy Within, and XCOM 2, they play in a similar style to like position your characters, take your turns, make your actions, make sure you're in cover. It's very easy to lose characters in this because you just didn't put them in cover quick enough or you missed a really important shot. But that's the nature of the glitches in the world of the game. The guys that have made this have worked their balls off to make this a quintessential classic to a game series that everybody had near but forgotten. This was originally a Kickstarter that actually did extremely well. Director's Cut out on the PlayStation 4 has fixed a lot of the problems, although I do find it clunky as hell to control using a key a control pad compared to a mouse and keyboard. If you can get the mouse and keyboard for your PS4 to give it a try, it's worth it because the mechanics are still in there, but um, game pad control it seems it feels a little bit too slow and involved and too many menus to work through rather than shortcut yourself around things. The Warriors was available for the PS2 and is now available for the PS4 at £7.19. If you're a fan of the Warriors movie, how about you? For me, it wasn't anything of special interest. It just seemed like a skinned brawler that actually just happened to be based around the Warriors. I barely know the movie. All I know is the Warriors come out and play. No, I only know that. That's all I know about that movie from memory. So Lego Marvel Superheroes. Lego. We said it earlier on. Lego! If you know Lego, play Lego! If you want more Lego, buy Lego! So, Lego Marvel Super Heroes, $21.99. I picked this game up for dirt cheap way back in the day on the American store, um, on my American account. The price of $21.99 is not great. Uh, especially considering the fact that Mar Lego of Marvel Avengers has been out since and it's actually still a full price. $21.99 for Lego Marvel Super Heroes is a bit weak. Uh, weak sauce of a price, especially whenever you can see it cheaper in other places. Lego The Hobbit, Lego the movie video game. Same as, man. I mean, like, like, you know it's a Lego game. You know there's not going to be anything added different, like, really, from the mechanics of it. It's just exploration, unlock characters, collect all the bits, move on to the next bit. Look at the funny representations of characters from the movie and places from the movie, and giggle away and move on. That's it. Disc Gaia 5 Alliance of Vengeance. If you haven't played a Disc Gaia game, picking it up at number 5 is probably not the smartest move in the world. But, um, Disc Gaia, it's, uh... Who's, who's into tactical combat with uh, monster capture and raising? This guy. Uh. <laughs> I, I kind of like the idea of it. I'm about to sit down and do a long play of World of Final Fantasy for Christ's sake. And it's like this light along with a bit of Nino Kuni and Pokemon thrown on top of it. So yeah, this guy at $21.99. If you're into the series, it seems like a decent price, but I have seen it for cheaper previously. So you probably want to skip this one out until the next seal. Assassin's Creed Black Flag. $9.99 for Black Flag? $9.99 for Black Flag? Black Flag is one of the best games in the Assassin's Creed series. Well worth it. Well worth the $9.99. It's a fuck around simulator, pirate simulator that we've all hoped for, but never actually asked for. So go and check out Black Flag at $9.99. That's, that's, like, that's the best Assassin's Creed deal you're going to get out of all these bunch of ones that are going to be coming up along with the Chronicles and looking at the previous games in the series, like Sunday, or the newest games in the series. Black Flag was a brilliant classic immediately, and it looks good on the PS4. Not exactly designed purposely for it, because it was built from ground up for lower consoles and then upgraded to this, but still a decent game and a decent price for that. That said game. Now Assassin's Creed Chronicles, these are actually all sold as a bundle together um, right here for $7.99. So if you're going to buy them, buy them in the bundle. Don't buy them individually. All of them are very similar, two-dimensional, kind of remind me a lot of those kind of like ninja jump simulators or strider remake. Since you're just trying to move through the world without being seen. For people who are into like two-dimensional platformers who played Prince of Persia classic a fair bit. These kind of games you'll enjoy. You'll enjoy that style, but uh, they'll be quite frustrating in their own way. Don't know how they relate into the rest of the Assassin's Creed kind of like plotting, but uh, interesting locations with China, Russia, and uh, India. It's just uh, around the world. It's, it's a one world trip with the Assassin's Creed with places that they probably will never do in a full active actual like exploration game. So Rogue Galaxy out from the PS2 to the PS4. Decent RPG series, or RPG game from the PS2 era, or JRPG. Um, combat was fun. Not much I can really remember from it. Uh, story didn't impress me too much. But visually, it has a pretty unique style at its time. Now, it looks a bit dated. But uh, the cell shading and kind of like uh, three-dimensional JRPG characters, fully articulated the way they are, and set in space, 
Space operas and space pirates always get my attention, but at five ninety nine, yeah, I, I I might go back to it again, but I still own it on disc from the original era, so why would I bother? Of course, Beyond Two Souls and Heavy Rain going for nine ninety nine each. If you're going to buy either one of these games, buy them in the bundle together. If you like one, you'll like the other. If you want to buy one, you might as well get the other. If you haven't already got it, then it's worth doing it that way. Rebel Galaxy, which was of course given to us as a PS Plus title a couple of months ago. Um, it's good fun. It's actually good exp space exploration, interesting story. It's kind of like if, the month that it came out, No Man's Sky came out. I would have rather the No Man's Sky being more like this than the No Man's Sky actually was. The only thing missing from this is first person combat. That's that's one of the things that are missing from this. A lot of space combat, a lot of um, docking, porting, grabbing stuff, but no like landing on planets or first person combat. But otherwise, it's a pretty good game. Um, for what it is, it's a very good game. It's a it's surprisingly sparse while also being very rich in content, and uh, the voice acting will give you a giggle. Dark Cloud for five ninety nine from the PS two to the PS four. Dark Cloud was a great game series. It's weird that we're all playing Minecraft now when Dark Cloud had us crafting shit constantly. You know, the entire point of the world of Dark Cloud is that you rebuild it from scratch. Yeah, it's Minecraft. It's Minecraft before Minecraft. It worked. It was a pretty good game. Uh, it's a bit old now, but uh, if you were curious about the origins of uh, crafting systems and games and survival, Dark Cloud's a good choice. It's a JRPG slash survival game in its own way. You wouldn't be, you'd be surprised by the fact that it exists, but you'd be entertained by its existence. Handball 16. I did not know that they were making professional handball games. Handball 2016 for 1649. I played handball as a kid. I was terrible at it. I wonder how well I would be in this video game. I'm actually tempted to give it a try. It's a weird sports game. It's one I'm willing to bet that we will not see many more of these. We won't see like 16. This, this is not going to become a long-lived franchise. It may already be a long-lived franchise, but I don't see them doing yearly releases on PS4. This might have been an experiment of a game that was a simulator on PC that did very well, and they've kind of like, Push it on to something else. At fifty-four pound down to sixteen forty-nine, let's just say it probably didn't sell very well at that top price. At sixteen forty-nine, I see a lot of people will only give this a try. This will be the rock star table tennis of the future, where we all got really into a game just because it dropped in price and was entertaining enough. Okay, Dragon Age, of course, we've already looked at. Senran Kagura East Estival versus. Wow, 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 wow! We have these games in existence. Wow. We've been, I, I mean, wow. I will be playing this on the channel at some point, but the opening of Estival Versus is... Wow. Yeah, it's... Titties. Titties. Everywhere. It's, it's Ninja Girls versus Spirit Girls versus each other versus... Unnamed masses that where you tear off their clothes with beating. This is Akiba Strip. This is Senran Kagura. This is Galgon. This is all those games that pretty much just rip off anime girls' clothing with beatdowns. I, I don't dislike them. I think the mechanics of the combat are actually pretty decent. But yeah. Hm. Well, what can you expect from them? What, do you expect anything better? Okay, so on to Dark Chronicle, the sequel to Dark Cloud. Uh, if you like Dark Cloud, then you'll like Dark Chronicle. So I'd recommend uh, probably start with Dark Chronicle if you're, if the matter's on the AGR, if you're willing to accept older, older, older graphics, go with Dark Cloud first. If you're a little bit leery about it, go with Dark Chronicle, which was an improvement over the game mechanics, but a little less crafting, a little bit more exploring, and obviously a prettier setup, because it came a few years later, with uh, the upgrades of experience, I suppose. Um, at the same price for both of them, I recommend both games, but probably Chronicle slightly over Cloud, just for uh, the, the newer gamers in the group. Like, anybody who's under 25, I suppose, maybe that's the way to describe it. Like, 25 and below, go for Chronicle. 25 and above, you remember Dark Cro Cloud originally. Okay, Dynasty Warriors 8 Empires. I have only ever played the demos of Dynasty Warriors 8. It was fun. It's a DW game. What do you expect? There's a lot of DW games. I prefer the Gundam variety. Plenty of other people enjoy the, the licensed varieties, but Dynasty Warriors is Dynasty Warriors. You're going to go in, you're going to beat down things. Hundreds of things. All of the things. Dynasty Warriors. What are you expecting? At $17.99? Eh. 
I mean, if you're a big Dynasty Warriors fan, you may have already bought the game in the series. But at $79.99, it's a very reasonable price, uh, especially for the length of time it will take you to max out this game. Just Dynasty Warriors games are Japanese completionist hard. You've got forever to play this damn thing. You For the hours that you will put into it, if you're into the game type, it's worth the price, definitely. Samurai Warriors 4, Samurai, War Samurai Warriors 4 2, and Samurai Warriors 4. Samurai Warriors 4 for $9.99, Samurai Warriors 4 2 for $22.49. Now, Samurai Warriors is. Uh, it's a Dynasty Warriors series, but uh, set in Japan rather than China, isn't it? Yeah, that, that's pretty much the difference. At $9.99, it's a good experimental price. It'll probably be uh, a lot more one on one -y combat. Um, so uh, Samurai Wars 4-2 seems to be an um, extended roster and a much bigger game. At those price, at the price for the for the original nine, at 9.99, worth a worth a gander, but probably not a highly recommend. Samurai Wars 4-2 at 22.49, don't recommend it at the price. Just because you these games will drop and they will drop again. Dynasty Wars is a game series that will perpetually exist. Whenever the next one comes out, the prices will drop. Guaranteed it. So, Earth Defense Force 4.1. Yes. If Earth Defense Force, I've played on the PS Vita, I think back in, or the PSP, back in the version 2 edition of it. Games are very, very simple. You're fighting giant ants, giant monsters, giant plants, giant kaiju, giant birds, giant people, giant... Uh, big things that are just big in whatever size and you have choices of different classes you either have big heavy weapons slow guy fast little slicey guy normal trooper with guns flying unit with rocket launchers at 7.99 this is a fun experience especially uh well if you play co-op local co-op with a friend it can be very fun although admittedly the <laughs> the frame rate takes a tanking because they're not exactly well optimized but 7.99 Earth Defense Force is a very fun, schmuppy game. It's essentially, if you think about it, imagine if Space Invaders was just a lot more interactive in a three-dimensional plane, and you have a lot of city destruction to go along with it. There's a lot of missions to play in it. The game will keep you entertained for a very long period of time. Um, personally, I think the Earth Defense Force games in Japan and Hong Kong are better because they have uh, more giant gal modes and stuff that are actually just uh, DLC content. I don't think there's that kind of stuff makes it over to the UK releases. So we're looking down into the next bit of games. I need to grab myself a drink of water. Wow, I've been talking for a long damn time here. Mm. All right, try to keep this super fast, but we're already at like 30 minutes going through these games. All right, Omega Quintet. No, just no. One of those RPG, JRPG games where it's a lot of talking, very little action, and the voices will drive you the fucking scene. The game's dropped in price fairly quickly, fairly fast, whenever it first came out. At Omega Quintet at $6.99, still can't recommend its price. Still not worth it. Farming, it's a, uh, Professional Farmer 2017. Not Farming Simulator 2017. Professional Farmer 2017, which is slightly different. I imagine there's less about... It's more resource management and less about driving a tractor. Bladestorm Nightmare. Bladestorm. It's, uh, Bladestorm is 99 Nights. It's a Dynasty Warrior style game. I pff, never got into the series as much as any of those other ones I mentioned. Is this at 1649? It seems like they've properly dropped the price down because at 5499 it was nowhere near worth it. Blade Storm might actually hold your attention now, but personally, I find the series that I've been playing for a long periods of time much more enjoyable. Uh, the combat, the combos, the action a lot easier to flow through. Blade Storm didn't hold my attention quite as much, but you might find it slightly different. Take a look at the trailer and see what you think. Fairy Fancer 4 or Fairy Fancer F Advent Dark Force. Can't tell you absolutely anything about this game. Um, from the DLC content, the amount of DLC the game has, I imagine there's a lot of uh, action-y kind of bits with girls' dresses changing because there seems to be a lot of costumes. It seems to have a lot of tie-ins to a lot of other games. It seems to be, a, again, quite like Omega Quintet, but probably a lot more related to action-y combat or action RPG rather than turn-based. That's all I can tell you. War of the Monsters from the PS2 to the PS4. Yes, it's a decent game. Although, admittedly, I'd so, so, so much rather be playing Tecromancer. Um, War of the Monsters kind of reminds me of uh, old arena combat games. If you played that Godzilla game that came out recently, it's kind of like that, but a much wider perspective and much more combat-y involved rather than actually doing the same trick over and over again. It's a good game. War of the Monsters was pretty cool, and it makes a rip on every single thing from Dan Gaio to King Kong. So, um, yeah, I recommend it at $3.99. It's worth a play. Uh, it'll be a good bit of fun for younger ones in the audience, and you're going to get to explain who all the characters are for the adults. Here you can go. Republic. 
Interesting game, uh, Prisk Premise is girl trying to escape. You control the security cameras and being able to tell her when it's safe to move around. So you don't control the girl, you control the cameras looking at her. Great idea. Uh, apparently, the it's, it's an episodic game series, but the episodes got weaker as they went along. I don't know what the conclusion was like because I didn't want to spoil it for myself for the possibility of playing. But at nine ninety nine, if you're into those kind of episodic games, this might actually uh, scratch an itch for you before the next Telltale shows up or whatever else. At nine ninety nine, a decent enough series. Um, Intrigue, uh, essentially it's a hacker trying to escape game. So imagine playing the more the tension-filled escape scenes from Mr. Robot, if there was ever actually anyone's like that. Gravity Rush Remastered at nine ninety nine. This game is a lot of fun. At nine ninety nine, you will get your money's worth. Uh, I have bought it on the Vita. I have bought it on the PS4. I am waiting for the sequel to come out. I can only say every penny was worth it spent. So highly recommend Gravity Rush Remastered for 9.89. Go grab that. It's definitely it's a definitely go to grab. Ape Escape 2 from PS1, wasn't it? To the PS4. So Ape Escape. It's Ape Escape. It's a classic. It's uh, made by the people that made Metal Gear Solid. Um, of course, it makes a reference to that in uh, by Konami. They used to have the apes kind of wandering around in Metal Gear Solid 3 and stuff. You have to capture apes. They you, they've all escaped. Fun. There you go. Fun for all the family. Three nineteen. I imagine you enjoy the crack of it. Motor clo motorcycle club? Eh, it's essentially a drive club, but with motorcycles. Didn't particularly like drive club. Wouldn't recommend motorcycle club. But at three ninety nine, it's cheap, but not really going to give you a massive amount of value unless you're really into motorcycles. Twisted Metal Black at three nineteen. It's a vehicle vehicular combat game. You could have a lot of fun with that. I'd recommend it. I'd actually recommend Twisted Metal Black, but um, don't know if the online multiplayer functions of Black are actually still included. If they are, much more fun. Uh, if you're playing local couch co-op only, uh, it could be you'll, it'll be a good session, but you might not play it too many times. JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, Eyes of Heaven. JoJo's Bizarre Adventure is a series that I've only started to truly understand the surreal, interesting plot of. Um, I played Eyes of Heaven demo. It's kind of less like a two, like a side-on Street Fighter clone, and more of like an arena fighter. And that's interesting, but also awkward. I don't know. I, I personally don't enjoy the series, or don't enjoy the, ser the gameplay enough to slog through the gameplay for the cool-ass action scenes that are in it. So I'd probably recommend just going and watching the show rather than actually paying twenty-four ninety-nine to do this. Uh, Rapper the Rapper two. PS1 Classic onto the PS4 console again. Parappa the Rapper. Chop, chop, turn, kick! If that makes no sense to you, then you're not going to really care about Parappa the Rapper. It's a real old, old school rhythm game. Um, you won't be using the dance mat for this, you'll be using the control pad. You might enjoy it, you might not. But uh, for any of the old bees out there, we've all played it at least once. You might want to go through it again. Wild Arms 3, classic JRPG, set in a western world with guns and knives and uh, slightly racist Native American references. But uh, <laughs> Wild Arms 3 is actually a fun game. I rank it up there with Grandia as like the non-square classics that I played through whenever I was growing up. Wild Arms is a great series. Wild Arms 3 at 599. You might find your enjoyment out of it, but you will realize that it's an old school JRPG. Very, very slog, text heavy. You might find it a little bit too much to kind of get into. But if you have the time to dedicate to it, it's well worth the fun. It's a bit of history. Adam's Venture Origins? No. <laughs> that's all I'm saying. Adam's Venture Origins doesn't look like fun at all to me. At 2249, that's garbage. No way I would actually spend that kind of money. Adam's Ar Adam Venture Origins feels like the kind of game I should pay less than a tenner for. Uh, until it does that, I can't recommend it. Uh, Flockers, 399. Do you want to go and chase down sheep? Are you a little bit of a collie at heart? Flockers is for you. It's a big pile of flockers. So yeah, uh, 399, we've had an adventure fun game. One of those ones to throw in front of the younger players. Uh, they could get a little bit of crack out of this. It's a bit comedic, it's a bit dark, but it's also a bit fun. Sheep hurt, sheep hurt in the game. Why not? Ark the Lad, Twilight of the Spirits for 479. Another one of those games that are in there in the classic non-Square Enix series. Um, yeah, Ark. Ark the Lad. If you don't know the Ark the Lad series from the mangas or the TV shows, because it's a fairly old one now, Twilight of the Spirits is actually a decent game in the series. Uh, not the only one, so it might be worth taking a bit of a wiki walk to find out if you're interested in the world that this takes place in, because it's a bit in media, Ray. It's a bit in the middle of things. 
Nero, nothing ever remains obscured. Know nothing about this game. Um, honestly, it's one of the... It, it, Nero looked to me like it was an indie title um, that I probably would enjoy if I got around to sit down and play it. At seven ninety nine. Worth a look, but uh, I have nothing that jumps out to me that actually immediately recommends it. The Mark of Cree, PS2 to PS4 translated game. I've seen this game in the bargain bins of PS2 places for so many years and never ever played it. And I don't think I ever will. It's a, a, for, for what it is, I sure it's actually a pretty decent third person action adventure game um, with a bit of like fighty combat that's slightly God of Wars esque, but not actually God of Wars. With an interesting kind of main character, which is uh, non-traditional main race and nationality, I, I'm sorry, but it just it doesn't it doesn't seem uh, there's nothing in it that actually kind of hooks me that I've seen so far. But it could be a very enjoyable playthrough. But um, nothing no, nothing that makes me want to play it. We're all teddy bears with knives. Yay! Know nothing about this game, but at 3.59, it's one of the cheapest ones in this deal. So I'm going to be willing to bet that a lot of you are going to buy it just because it's uh, a punt of a cash. Doesn't seem to actually hold that much interest to me, but at 3.59, it's kind of a, it's in that it's in that vein of like, um, why not take a look? Uh, RBI Baseball 16. No, I've got my Mega Strike, uh, uh, Super Strike Baseball or whatever the bloody hell it is, Super Mega Baseball uh, to play. That's the only baseball game that I need. I don't need one that's even anywhere near more realistic. Okagi Shua, Shadow King. Know nothing about it. 3.99. Again, whenever you get down to this vein of like the three pound, four pound games like Rise of Kasai, Fan Division, Puzzle Quest, they like these are all so cheap that you might want to give them a try. Fan Division, I personally enjoyed back in the day on the PS2 because it was a giant visualization unit for playing uh, music and games. But Boom Boom Rocket probably took the crown of it from for me as a better game because I was able to play my MP3s on it. Fan Division has a set playlist, but it is a very pretty game. But I wouldn't say it's actually a massive game of attention. If you've got a cat in your house and you want to actually play a game that'll have the cat punching the screen, just batting at it constantly, then I recommend Fan Division because it's actually it's a it's a visually stunning little bit a little piece of a PS2 history. Now Puzzle Quest at two thirty nine. That is a good buy at two thirty nine. But I'm willing to bet you already own this game somewhere. You don't even know you own it. You probably have it in your library of mobile games on your phone. Somebody at some point bought a copy of Puzzle Quest on your account. Somebody somewhere has a copy of this. There's been a sequel to it, which was fun, although a lot more involved. But Puzzle Quest is that old school Match 3 Gems RPG game with the most punishing uh, AI, I suppose, <laughs> essentially, most punishing CPU opponents because they will take every advantage they can. You will scrape to get a single win off a goddamn dire rat. You will fight every single step of the way. I enjoy the hell out of Puzzle Quest, but it is a massive time sink. So if you feel like, <laughs> give it a try, feel free to at 2.39. I mean, that's dirt cheap. Worlds of Magic Planar Quan Quest. Doesn't really scratch my whistle. Um, visually, the game didn't actually kind of draw me in in any way, shape, or form. It just seemed to have a lot of spartacle effects and the idea that you're actually trying to travel from plane to place and you're fighting the many enemies of a single emperor. The narration was interesting of the trailer. If you want to give it a listen, go and watch the trailer. The trailer is kind of fun to watch, but uh, that's mostly just for the, the really, really overwrought voice acting in it, which I hope isn't in the full game. But um, at 979, still not really worth it. Uh, you're probably not going to see this game for cheaper again, but you're probably going to see it around your channel, you're around the, th the, the store at some point. It'll, it'll pop back up. It'll come back on sale. Probably not at, at such a good price, but it's not really worth playing for. Connecticut. Vehicle games, driving games. I do like myself a sci-fi driver. Um, what I'm hoping for is the revival of the Wipeout franchise, but it's very unlikely we're going to get to see that. So until then, how about some motorcycles that are actually magnetically held to the track? It's it's F Zero, it's Wipeout, it's race cars. Yeah, Connecticut, three nineteen. Again, it's one of those punt prices. You might get a little bit of fun out of this. Competitively, you'll probably waste a lot more time than you need to to try and get through the end of the car, the championships in it. But racing games, like if if you're into that kind of game, you're probably going to jump this at three nineteen because you might have already you might have got it already. But the price it is at half price, it's a fun driver. I like I I would actually do the play this. I was going to be a bit of multiplayer out of it, but um, it doesn't seem like that fun of a multiplayer game, especially with uh, the the speed and the turning circle and a lot of the car vehicles in it. Not really worth it. 
So, yes, that's been the entirety of the PlayStation Plus double discounts. I am sorry, my voice is completely gone from about halfway through this. But, yes, this was um, thrown up just as a quick video, just for um, entertainment's sake. To kind of like see what people think of the sales and my opinions of games that are available in sales. I might do this more often. If you liked what you heard, if you actually are here all the way to the end of the seal list, then feel free to hit the like button. If you failed out a lot earlier on, I imagine you've already hit the dislike button. And if you have any questions or comments or thoughts about any of the games or my opinions on any of the games that are available in this month's PlayStation Plus double discount seal, then make sure to say it in the comments underneath. And remember, you can always hit the subscribe button up here to make sure that you can actually get in to watch all the other videos and all the other stuff that's sitting on the side here that will actually be able to be watched at any time that you feel lizzy. So I will see you all in the next episode. Bye-bye.